Well, it's been a remarkable weekend at the Rugby World Cup and last night, South Africa and France, Mills, JK, it was another fantastic contest and unfortunately for the host, they're now out of the Rugby World yeah. Cup. Bitterly disappointing for the French fans, but ultimately South Africa, it's a Rugby World Cup. We talk about it all the time, they know how to win and did they just get it right tactically, selection-wise? Was their 80 minutes almost perfect? Well, the results sort of showed they got it right, didn't they? I mean, France, yeah, it is. It, it's, it's sad because of the fans, isn't it, in terms of France and uh, the French getting right in behind the, the home side. But South Africa, this is, this is where they get at the at most best, um, JK. The fact that they can, they know how to win knockout football. They're, they're not the defending champs for no reason. Yeah, and I think just their balance was way better. I've been critical of them in the past, sometimes using the boot too much, but I think they got that mix incredibly right. They had, you know, the back three were bringing the back ball strong. Um, their kicking game was a little bit shorter. Yeah. You know, their first two tries came from um, errors from France. France were good early, but Africa, South Africa just know how to finish those games off. A um, bit of controversy around the HIA and guys coming on and off, but that's South Africa. They know how to use the rules and they know how to um, really put pressure on opposition. So you've got to say the best team won, like you said before. Yeah, and, and it, it's a, clear that they came in with a plan when I think about it, Mills. The fact they went through games where they had 7 1 split, 6 2 split. Then they went to the traditional 5 3. Maybe that was because Andre Pollard was able to return and come back from injury. But in terms of a confidence builder, were they short on confidence? Did they need this big win? Or all of a sudden, does now for South Africa looking forward, they look at England, who they've got, and the formula is it set? Uh, do they start taking threes consistently? I mean, I look at this tournament and the first 40 is always different to the second 40. Yeah. First 40 teams are playing a little bit more uh, adventurous and all of a sudden you get closer and closer, the last 20 becomes critical. But is the formula set? Is there anything different from South Africa going forward? I think they're comfortable with the formula. I think they're comfortable with the way they play. Look at the, look at the team. You know, so much talk about which sort of what nine and ten combination that they're going to use. They, they used an expansive one, but did they really play expansive in that first sort of twenty odd minutes? I think that tactically they got it right. You know, they broke on the outside, then they went to to the boot. You know, caught you know the uh, the French. You know, um, you know, I suppose back three off guard. They won that battle. Yeah. Um, you know, I know you know France. You know, started off well, but I think throughout this whole tournament. We've been constantly talking about you know South Africa and how they use um, you know the, the you know rotating their the subs, the makeup of their bench. They just seem to be ahead in, in terms of that. And so yep. when you look at them, they're kind of comfortable with that. They're not worrying about anything else. They know what they're that they're doing out there, and they go out there. And it's almost like everyone's trying to second guess what they what they are trying to do against South Africa. Where South Africa go, they we know what we want to do. Yeah, and you know what, you can't measure that the South African side are very good at pressure. You know, yeah. they deal with it really, really well. Yeah. They know it's coming. We saw it in the last 20 minutes. So yeah, I just think that it's all planned out. I think they're meticulous planners. And I think, I don't know how they're gonna play against England, because they might come out with another game plan. And I think their game plan last night against France was very different to what they play, you know, and on other occasions. So they'll have it all planned out. Can we explain, Mills, why France weren't able to deal with that pressure, uh, find a way to get across the line? Because they played such good rugby for a lot of that game. When you look at their selection tactically, the fact that you know um, Dupont wasn't able to play up until up until that game, uh, yeah. recovering from injury, did they seem a little bit off? I thought they still played pr pretty well. Yeah. I got the feeling and sense they were going to find a way in the end. Where did it go wrong for them? I thought they did too. I thought they were going to possibly find a way, but as time went on, and pressure, you yeah. know, you can't measure that. You know, as the pressure went on, they almost there's little sort of segments in there where they started to panic. It got a little bit sort of how to scouter. Then they lost a little bit of structure. They weren't really comfortable in terms of where South Africa were. The line speed, you know, from broken play in terms of defence from you know um, Creolans there out, out wide, it almost sort of gave France there. They're thinking, well, what, what are they doing here? What are they doing? And and added to the, to the pressure they're already under, the expectation of having their home crowd. They, they started well, they needed to push push on because, man, when they got that crowd behind them, yeah. the downside to it is they, they went a little bit scrappy, JK. Well, I think DuPont, um, yeah, him not playing was a problem. I thought that he was out on his feet in the last five minutes. He was outstanding, he was awesome. world's best, but he was out on his feet because he hadn't played for a few weeks. Incredibly courageous thing for him to do. But what happened actually when they were trying to mount some pressure is they made little errors. You know, knocking on the ball, they got a bit panicky, started throwing it around a bit. It's just keeping composure and mounting the pressure, and that's what South Africa's good at. 
is this neutral territory now? The fact, or is it is it England's tournament with the fact of their fans? Is this the African fans? I mean, who's the, you know the, all of a sudden there is no home field advantage, is there, JK? Well, pressure pressure makes an amazing thing, right? So who's on, who's under pressure now? Not Argentina and not England. Yeah. You know, South Africa and New Zealand are under pressure as the incumbent one and two now. Um, South Africa incumbent world champions. So England and and um, you know, England and Argentina go into it with nothing to lose, and that makes it a little bit easier for you. And they haven't been in that sort of, I suppose, quality form both sides, and so they haven't got nothing to lose. It probably sits right inside in terms of where they want to be. You know, roll into this, everyone's writing them off, and they come out and perform that magical game that we you know, that could possibly produce. Look, we, we knew there was only two teams that could come out of these two quarterfinals, and it's the All Blacks and it is South Africa, and of course on the other side it's Argentina and England, so we've got some two incredible matchups coming. The All Blacks taking on a familiar flow and Argentina, and then of course the other one, England, taking on South Africa.